to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to another episode of A Well-Designed Business. It's Power Talk Friday. On the show, I have Raquel Langworthy. Raquel is a lifestyle and interiors photographer, and she's based right here in the good old NJ, Berkeley Heights, New Jersey, to be exact. She mainly services the East Coast, but she's had the pleasure of traveling the country for various projects and assignments, both in documentary storytelling and interiors. And you'll hear Raquel say in the show today, she has goals for more travel travel related work. So if you are anywhere in the US and beyond and after hearing how she approaches her work, you might consider hiring Raquel for your next design project. Her work has been published often and most recently on the cover of New York Cottage and Garden, as well as a host of online publications such as domino.com and Architectural Digest online. Raquel moved to New Jersey only two years ago, and although she still feels new to the NJ market, she has had the pleasure of working with a host of talented interior designers and architects capturing their work and their portraits. Her focus in photography is naturally lit bright spaces. Her goal when photographing interiors is not only to capture the overall space, but to captivate an audience through visual storytelling as well as styled compositions. On the show today, Raquel focuses on explaining her collaborative and proactive philosophy in working with you, the interior designer, not only to help you create beautiful portfolio worthy shots, but also about her efforts to help you get published. It's a twist on a business relationship that we have not yet discussed on the show. I'm very excited to share it with you. A quick thank you to two of our show sponsors, My Doma Studio and Kravit Inc. and another quick announcement. If you will be at Las Vegas Market next week on Monday, July 30th, Kravit and My Doma Studio are having a lunch and a book signing for me at 1 o'clock in the Kravit Showroom. So if you already have your, have your copy of my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, a true step-by-step practical guide to opening a business and getting it set up for success, bring it with you. I'd love to meet you and to sign it. And if you'd like to get a copy, go to Luann nigara.com slash book. Alrighty, let's talk about partnering with your photographer with Raquel Langworthy. Hey, Raquel, thanks so much for joining me on a well-designed business today. It's, I'm so happy to be here. So Raquel, I'm just going to give a shout out to two of our designer friends. We have Christina Kim and Ellie Morose, both in common. And these are two women that are very talented interior designers here in New Jersey. And we are fortunate enough at this point to be working with Ellie on some of her projects for window treatments. And Christina is a little further away and probably mm-hmm. we're not going to be so viable for her on a regular basis, but you are doing the work for both of these designers and, uh, both your work and their work is pretty spectacular. Thank you so much. Yeah, they're both really talented. And and regardless of distance, they're both getting a lot from knowing you and listening to your show because I, I wouldn't have been, um, I wouldn't have heard about it <laughs> if it hadn't been for the way that you've added, um, you know, benefits to their business of what they've learned from it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's terrific. I mean, they both have shared that with me as well. And, um, you know what I always say, look, you can lead a horse to water, but it doesn't mean they're going to drink. Oh, so yeah. it's Absolutely. really the designers that, that listen, but act as well. And both yeah. of these women are, are doing that. And that's, what's so exciting for them. And they of course are. they're, they're, they're very smart and talented to begin with. So this is just, uh, whatever little bit this is helping is icing on the cake. 
cake for them, which is really pretty terrific. Yeah. And I have to say for both of them too, they're just a pleasure to work with. Mm. I mean, they're the, the kind, they're, they're both the sweetest, most generous, lovely women. Yeah. And, um, and that makes for an awesome partner to yeah. work with, especially when their, their clients have to see and interact a lot with them. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. And what's interesting, you just use the word, uh, the term partner when you, you refer to your designer clients and that's yes. the, um, the gist of what I'm understanding in basically what I know about you, the little bit of conversation that we've had already. And I think that's what I most would like to express in this interview is how yeah. your philosophy really is one of partner with a designer on the project because I think that everybody assumes that their photographer is partnering with them and I've worked with you know several interior photographers and of course on site there is a certain level of collaboration and input and so forth which you think yeah we're partnering but the mm -hmm. way you describe it is a much more um, thorough and more detailed uh, uh, relationship is what. And so I'd love for you to share that with us. Take yeah. us, imagine I'm a designer. I've just found you through somebody else's work or through Instagram. And I now reach out to you because I'm thinking maybe I'd like you to photograph a project for me. What do you do in the beginning that you set up and make it known that this is a partnership and then you're going to be very involved? What, what, how do you do that, Raquel? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, the first thing I do is that I don't really communicate with you over email. I, I set up a phone call okay. um, because I think um, I think it was Steve Jobs. Like if if it said something like, if you ask people what they want, they always say faster, cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> and so a lot of times I think with photography, because we're such a large line item for um, a designer's business, like you just want to know that you want to know the details, like tell me how much it costs, you know? Yes, that's a <laughs> um, good point. Good observation. Yeah. And, um, and, and I get, I get that. I mean, I understand. Um, but I also want you to know with that big ticket comes uh, a wealth of information and, and a collaboration, a partnership that I care a lot about. Many of my clients I've been working with for, um, five or six years and shoot multiple projects throughout a year with. And I always say my relationship with the designer comes above and beyond, um, anything with press or, you know, anything that I personally get to have from the photography, um, because it's a long-term relationship. So what I typically do is I set up a phone call and I, um, that phone call is to go through process and to learn about your business, learn about where you are at, because everybody's at a different phase. You know, my clients, I have some of them who've been 10 years in business, 20 years in business and other people who, you know, they've just, you know, they finally have stuff to shoot. And so they're starting to shoot it and they want to work with somebody that they can trust and move forward with. Um, so I need to know that because it gives me a really good idea of where we are, where we're at and, you know, how much experience you have with uh, photography. I want to hear about your previous photography experiences. I want to hear about what you liked, what you didn't like. It all is information for me because I care about having a happy client just like you do. Right. Um, and, I talk through um, my process, so I give you a good idea of like how I work. Um, it's pretty clear from my photography, I think, that I'm a natural light photographer, um, and I do I do use lighting, um, but it's it's more of a fill situation. And sometimes I bring in an assistant to help me um, in really really tricky situations. There's one awesome um, firm in Montclair called Roost Interiors. Um, who also listened to your show oh. and, um, <laughs> and, you know, like I needed to know a lot about the project, um, you know, in advance so that we could set up the right lighting for it. Um, because they had a basement project that was super sick. It was, um, a, you know, a really custom gym, like enclosed in glass because the homeowner was a Pilates instructor mm. plus a living area. And, and when you have obviously a very, very large space with no natural light, you got to think through that scenario in advance. So those kinds of things are really important to find out. Um, and, and I get a sense of from that conversation, if you need help, um, prepping, um, one of the things that I'm really involved in is composition. So the composition of, you know, of each shot and the framing of it is what's going to sell your work. And a big facet of that is styling. Um, and I don't want, and I am not a stylist, so I never really want to 
pre present myself that way. But I've photographed enough spaces and I've been, you know, in the thick of it with with enough designers who are actually really talented at styling that I can get a sense of what works now. OK. Um, and so if I have a designer who is not so comfortable with styling and is not so comfortable about, um, you know, prepping that, whether they're new or old, it doesn't matter right. to the industry. Because I had a designer in Connecticut who was super established and is, is you know, making work like gang bucks, gangbusters. But when she first started shooting work, styling wasn't a big deal. Instagram wasn't a big deal. Right. You know, like it wasn't it wasn't the thing. So right. she just shot it with whatever her client had on hand and and went for it. But then realized, oh, you know, this this bowl really is not something I would have chosen, you know, or maybe um maybe, you know, having the toaster oven on the kitchen says something about me that I don't want it to say, you know? Right, right, right. So, um, so she used me, um, to, to work through styling composition, um, to make the project speak more her style. Hmm. And so I do talk through that with, um, with designers on the get go and, and, and people need, you know, different designers need different things. So that's what our first initial call um, is about. And I go through my, my process and, you know, how long it takes you to get back files and all that, all that jazz. Um, and that's our first introduction to one another mm -hmm. because, um, I, you know, it, again, it's a long-term relationship with my client and, and you can't do that over email, just like you can't do it, you know, with a homeowner that you're going to be spending a year with, you know, right. doing a renovation. So, well, what I That's love about it is, is that you were, you're expressing how, you know, you use the analogy that of, of Steve Jobs' quote, cheaper, faster, which is so, it really is a very clarifying thing to say because on the email, you are just going to deal with facts, but in the conversation, you're building the value. You're expressing exactly. your value. You're building the relationship. You're building the value. And you, what happens is, is just like when interior designers have, like you just said, their first conversation on the telephone with a potential client, it's not just, oh, I'm going to do a floor plan and pick the drapes. It's, oh, mm -hmm. let me tell about this and let me find out about that and your family lifestyle and how many years are going to live in the house and all the things where the potential client starts to understand, oh, this is a lot more complicated yeah. <laughs> than I thought it was going to be. And particularly in your case for photography, I think you're right. We can naively think you're going to just come in, take the pictures and leave. I, I remember we had um, Design New Jersey a year or so ago here. So Shelter Magazine. Well, you live in New Jersey. I say it to you like you're not in New Jersey. You're a Jersey girl now. It's only I'm two years, girl. but you're a Jersey girl now. I'm a Jersey girl <laughs> now. It. And I have two other we Jersey adopted girls you. that are four and two. <laughs> yes, right? Now, they're legit now. They're yeah, ours. They're legitimately. <laughs> That's it. We, we have to adopt you, but they're, they're legit. They're legit. So, but... um. They had reached out to me and asked me for to do uh, uh, to work with them on a column on window treatments on what was you know popular then and what were the styles and the different types of pleats and stuff and it was funny because they said and you know we'll send a photographer to take pictures of your work too if you want to include in the spread and I was like wait I'm looking at the phone wait you called me like I don't have to like go pitch this this was awesome right so but yeah. then Kimberly and I sat there and we looked at each other and we're like huh, but whose house are we going to take pictures of? Yeah. Because, you know, for us, at, we're, you, we understand that many interior designers do not get to do their a room designed to completion, right? You sometimes like, oh, yeah. there's a many lot of, of not. right? There's a lot of luxury level designers that that's a requirement. We only design to completion, but there's many that do not. Well, think about me. I'm doing one component window treatments. You could still right. have the Bob's Lazy Boy you sofa have, there yeah. for 90 years. You know what right. I'm saying? And I so, know, which is similar to an architect. Architects have that yes. problem too. Yes. They really do. And they don't nothing about styling the way a designer does. <laughs> yeah. So so we were like saying to ourselves, all right, well, who's got great window treatments? And we needed three different styles of drapery plates. Who's got at least, you know, two, if not the third style of drapery plate, different yeah. kinds of drapery rods and the rooms look good. And we're, you know, two, finally she just looked at me. She's like, it has to be your house. And I was like, Huh. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. So, so, but the oh my thing gosh, is this is a whole nother ball game when you've lived in a home forever. I mean, I always say like, it's easier to shoot stuff on install for the designer because you don't have to schlep everything out. But when it's yeah. your home, 
Oh my gosh, that's that's tricky. That well, is, but I'd only tricky. been living in it in about a year at that point, oh, and okay. I had not accessorized it because I don't want any accessories anymore. My house is empty, so I have great <laughs> looking drapes and I have great looking kitchens and bathrooms. The rest yep. of it is a little like, does anybody live here? Okay, <laughs> but the, my, where I was going, the point was, is that. She, when the, the photographer came, Marissa Pellegrini, who was an awesome, awesome New Jersey I photographer. Yes. Good, yeah. um, when she came, I had no concept of that this was going to be eight hours in my house to take three shots. Yep. You know, I really, that was my whole point of that whole lead up. It was that when you don't know, you don't know. And so when you, when a photographer come, cause it was the first time I was ever on a professional interior shot and it was just, whoa, like, oh, she was like, well, it'll take me, you know, however long to get the lighting right. And we're just like, oh, okay, yeah. well, call us she when is, you're done. <laughs> she's a very talented lighting photographer. She's yes. a commercial, she's a commercial photographer, but she, she she works a lot with lighting and that's her style and she is she's very good at it yes yeah she is she is terrific and and so anyway so that was my whole point is that you don't when you don't know the process and you don't understand everything that's attached that you as a photographer bring to the game you can want to approach it like just email me your rates you know what I mean and so good on you that you take the time to express your value yeah and and also time frame like um, how long something's going to take. So I need for my client, I also need to get a room list. I need to know how many rooms we're shooting. And then usually I have people send me as many scouting shots as they can from their phone Mm. because these things relay to me how long it's going to take me to, to do it. And I think like, um, it's so funny. I don't know how this happened because there's such a, there's such a popular brand, but everybody knows in the studio McGee. Oh, sure. She's been on the show twice. Shane. Oh yeah. Super, yeah. super talented, but oh. um, I think that they had maybe a younger person reaching out for um, information about photographers in a specific area. I had a friend who was like, oh, Raquel, you should submit for this. And um, this girl listed out like, I think like seven rooms. And she was like, it's just a half day. And I was like, <laughs> no, it's not. That's probably two days. <laughs> like if I'm doing this correctly, um, you know, like it's probably going to be two. <laughs> yes, right. Like, you know, and um, and so I think – you know, I, and, and, you know, I, she wasn't, she wasn't like the owner of the business. It's different. No, she was um, probably, yeah, she, she had no idea. And no she, idea. even if and, Shay looked at it, she'd be like, that's not possible. Yeah, you yeah, know, we're going to spend 25 minutes styling each room and that's a half a day right there for seven rooms. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. So, <laughs> and I think, um, but I, you know, I've had clients who, who have thought, oh, I could fit this in a half day. And, and what I always say is if you, if you want to, if that is, is your budget that we're working in, we can, it just means that you're not going to get as many shots or as much coverage of a specific space. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not going to be like the full soup to nuts coverage. Right. Um, and, and of course way, there's different needs for all of us at different yeah. levels of our business, right? Yeah. I mean, you're starting out and maybe the objective is to just get something that's professionally done and maybe somebody like Shay McGee is going to have you there for four days and get everything perfect. And then somebody starting out as will do the half a day, right? You got to get your toe in the water, right? Oh yeah. yeah. And absolutely. And yeah. I do both. I do half days and full days, but mm-hmm. getting that, getting that room list is really important because it helps me decide, um, and know what to estimate for you. So you're aware of what it's going to, you know, what it, how much time it's going to take and, and you know, how, how I, how much, time I think we're going to be taking to capture the full space. Exactly. Okay. So now um, let's take it a step further. The styling is very important. And you're talking about, you said the composition of the, of the, of the picture is very important. So I, I interviewed Charlotte Safavi, how do you say Safavi. her last name? Safavi, right? Like I, the rug. Right, 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 right. I, yeah. And Charlotte was on the show, episode 138. And Charlotte, really, really smart, sweet lady, too. And she is a professional stylist for interior design photography shots, right? Yeah, and so yeah. we had this whole conversation about how important that is and how it's actually a different skill set. And so what you described to me is that there's three skill sets that there we have the interior designer skill set that creates the beautiful space. We have the stylist that can set up the shot and make the most of it. And then you as the photographer, you bring in and layer in your lighting and your angles and all of that. But you sometimes I'm understanding 
engineering can cross into the assistance with styling as well. It sounds like. It can, yeah. Okay. And, and usually it, and some, some people, some clients have me come in ahead of the photo shoot to help them through that process. Like I had a, a new, a new New Jersey, um, designer, her name's, um, Anch NYC. Her name's, her first name is Shweta. Totally new, um, did her own house first and, um, I did a site visit and I was like, okay, yeah, that spot probably needs a tall plant. That spot probably needs, you know, um, your coffee table is going to need certain items. And I went through her home and I, and I talked through some of those things because again, it's her first project, like, you know, bringing in, um, styling assistance is, is difficult Mm -hmm. and financially sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I do think that, um, if you're at a place where you're like, okay, I have this thing and I need, I want magazine ready content. And that's my goal. Like I have a really specific press goal. Um, Charlotte's the right person to bring in for that. And I always say she's the right person to bring in for large projects because that's where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. Um, and I've, and I've worked with her on photo shoots and I've worked with her pre-styling and she, she does it. I mean, she, she's a true stylist. Like Mm. she's the person who goes and looks, she goes shopping with you. She creates lists. Like she's the person who's like literally planning, planning the project. And it makes sense to bring her in for large projects because it's a lot of work. I mean, when you have a full house, that's a lot of styling. And are we (laughs) talking about Raquel, are we talking about when you talk about that level of styling, okay, where Charlotte is coming in, spending hours figuring it out, then shopping with you and then putting it all together, or is that in homes that are just completed? Are we talking about like a new space delivered so they're devoid of accessories? No, or are you talking about I, homes no. that really they have all their own accessories, but Charlotte's coming in going, okay, you want this in a magazine. We're taking all this out and we're doing all new stuff. Yeah, it's it's not necessarily new. Like, wow. Um, so I, um, I photographed one with her and a client that I have who's based in Long Island, Abaca Interiors. Um, and it was super cool, modern, um, architecture and stuff. So the architects, I, um, I didn't work with them specifically, but there were two architect, uh, architect team that worked on the house. And then, um, and then my client, Lisa of Abaca, uh, was the d- decorator on it and, um, and helped, you know, with the kitchen and all that. But Charlotte came in, helped her style the project worked through, um, and worked through angles too, which that was like, I think one of the trickiest spaces I've ever photographed in terms of figuring out overalls. Cause it's just this one big open room with like a, with like a random staircase kind of in the center because of just the style of architecture. Mm. And she worked through angles with me, um, because that is also a layout thing for magazines. And she pitched a project and then we ended up getting, we got it featured in New York Cottage and Garden. It was the cover of the magazine. Wow. And it was a 10-page spread. Wow. So, um, and... And that was recent, wasn't that? That was recent. We photographed, but we photographed it last year. Okay. Because I remember looking at out. your bio and I thought that you just had this cover and 10-page spread this past spring. It, yeah. And actually, yeah, it it launched in the spring, but we of photographed 2018. it. Yeah, but yes. we photographed it in last 2017 year. Okay. last fall. So yeah. that's a shared project, you and Charlotte, and then the designer, and then the homeowner. It's a collaborator. Yeah. Wow! 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 And okay. they have some really like high end art um, that of a of a talented photographer uh, who I'm I'm blanking on right now, which okay. is terrible. <laughs> but he's a portrait photographer, so okay. Um, and that was actually the cover art of the of the magazine, and okay. and but you know, and it's not to say you don't need just because, you know, like you have this great project, um, and you've spent it, you don't need to spend that level to get published. Um, and I, I don't, I don't want to make designers feel like they have to go to the links of that to get published because they don't, I have an architect who, um, who pitched the project on his own, um, of one that I did out in, um, Rockaway's, and he just got featured in East, East Coast Home and Design for the architecture of it. And mm. like with the full story on that. And, and that's with no styling assistance other than me. So I don't want, I don't want people to feel that they have to, they have to invest in a, in a stylist. Um, for okay. So I, like he- press, you know, I hear Especially that, but tell us the distinction of when then. So uh, often on the show, I ask the, the, you know, the guests that I'm speaking with to clarify and 
make it understandable for the baby designer. But now I want you to clarify and make it understood for, say you're a designer, you're 10 years in business, you are really hitting your stride, your work is really rocking, you've, you're just at the point where you've been for a year or two doing those full luxury design to completion type projects. And when you photograph, the photographing is terrific and it, and the pictures are great and the styling is good okay but when do you think it is worth that investment to actually in addition to a talented photographer like yourself go and invest in a talented stylist like charlotte what's that distinction how do we know that i honestly think um that it's all based on your marketing budget for your business and your personal goals i've heard you talk a lot with um designers what's your why Right. <laughs> you do and listen to the show. Raquel. I do listen to the show. And I read that book, Start With Why yeah. by Simon Simek. And I, I read that book. Mm -hmm. And um, it really depends on what's your marketing budget, what are your goals as a business, and what matters to you. Okay. I have designers, um, the Manhattan designers, um, people who are based in the Manhattans or out in the Hamptons. Those national publications are very different for them than they are for people based in New Jersey because they're working with a global, very wealthy clientele. And so when they get featured on Domino or they get featured in a magazine, they might get business off of it okay. because of, you know, of the reach of what the budgets are okay. now. And they have different goals, right? Like, yes, I really want to get in a national publication. Yes, I want to get an architectural digest. But, um, and, you know, I had one client in Brooklyn who, who, yeah, they really just want those big name ones because they're at a level where they're, they're churning out, you know, huge, huge, huge multi-million dollar projects. And then I have, you know, um, I have clients in New Jersey like Christina Kim who, we did a small project together and um, and she really just wants web press right now. And mm -hmm. I pitched it to Domino based off of what I learned from your show. <laughs> and um, and I, I really thought through what you had said with that um, episode with Ashley uh, Hotham Cox and also Amy Flurry. Oh, okay. And I submitted her and, and she's now being interviewed by Domino.com because the web article is, is a fun way for her to get press on, on social media. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So there's two things in here that I want to pu pull out of it. The first is um, to just tell us what was the lesson that you specifically, or what was the thing that you heard in those two episodes with Amy Flurry and Ashley that, you know, cause share it with us. What was your moment? Cause here you are well published. What made you turn around and pitch for Christina based on those shows? I think, um, what I have learned over the years was that um, after, I mean, I've worked with Charlotte for many years now. Um, I, I was very lucky to be networked with her because I don't live anywhere near her. <laughs> I didn't realize but, that um, when I mentioned that. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I have, I've worked with her for at least, I think it's been like four years or something on and off. Um, and we usually have at least one project together a year. We're shooting one in, in Chatham actually soon, um, next month. Oh, right here in Chatham, She's New Jersey? Yep. Yeah, right up here. She's no She has a client who's actually based in Virginia, but they have a project in Chatham that they're photographing and she's coming in for styling and that and I'm photographing it. Nice. Um, but <clears throat> from those specific podcasts, one of the things I learned was that I was depending on my client or Charlotte to go get me press and like letting that kind of you know, let it, let it kind of work out the way it would. And mm -hmm. for me, a lot of my clients, because I'm young and because of the nature of the way I've grown my business, a lot of my clients come from Instagram so that when I'm shared by an online publication on Instagram and I'm tagged in a post, it brings me business. Mm -hmm. And, um, I didn't want to react anymore. Um, I've, I've only been in Jersey for two years and specifically the last year and a half, it's gone like really, really, niche into the interior decor, um, world, even though I've been photographing for a long time. And so many of my clients just don't actually know how to manage press. So I was like, I do, I have a background in marketing and advertising. I know how to be, I know how to, 
I, I was listening to things that Ashley was saying and what she was saying was don't waste my time. <laughs> <laughs> right. you know, she, that was really what I pulled from her and she's right. She's got a lot of projects she's sifting through. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, I need to be, this is a pitch and I have to do it in as few words as possible. And, um, and I have a relationship with Domino because they featured me with multiple clients before. And I had Charlotte make an introduction with me because online is awesome. I mean, Charlotte, Charlotte loves press. She, you, if you look at her Instagram, she obviously is wonderfully marketed and, and has great connections and stuff, but where her, her business is, is really in the print world. Mm. And so I was like, well, why don't I stop wasting your time <laughs> with online? And let's let me, you know, let me, we had a, we had a long, nice chat and I was like, why don't you, you know, it'd be great if you could just network me with the online editor mm. and I could just send her projects, you know, that I think would be a good fit. And, and, Christina had one that I really just thought was a wonderful story and I can't say too much about it because it's not released yet. Right, 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 right. But, um, but, and they, and they bit. That's awesome. I love that. I love that. So you really just, I, I love it. So you took, you took out of it that to be, what they have both said, Amy and Ashley is to be direct and concise and blah, blah, blah. But you also took out of it that you can be the manager, the guider, the, the companion, the, the facilitator of this, that you don't have to rely on the designer to do that. So that's interesting. And of course, what exactly. designer is going to say, nah, never mind. Don't do it for me, please. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's awesome. So just if anybody wants to hear these episodes, we have Ashley on episode 321. And then of course, Amy Flurry has been on episode 108 and 323. So, and then I'll just repeat that Charlotte was on episode 138. So now the other thing that you said in there that I wanted to get back to was when I, the original question was how does a seasoned designer that's really at the cusp know when it's time to make the additional investment, not just in the line item of the photographer, but with the stylist and what you said is know your why and so and you described how a designer and we're gonna have to now generalize right so we're talking about a designer here in New Jersey versus a designer in Manhattan and we're 13 miles away but it's a world of difference sometimes so I guess it would be no different if you were in Chicago or on the outskirts or in LA or the outskirts yeah, right absolutely. okay and so the thing is that uh, correct me if I'm reading what you're saying properly. What you're saying is, is if your why is, oh, uh, Raquel said that the project will look so much better if I invest in, in a, a, a professional stylist and that makes me feel great and that makes my ego feel great. But you know, that's all I'm looking for. That's a waste of your money. What you're saying is, is if yeah. your why is to really be launched onto the national stage to get national recognition because yeah. you're prepared as a firm to do national work. Yeah. And you want to do national work. Right. In other words, there's one thing to want to do it. That's first thing you have to want to do it. Right. Because some people have no desire. But then the yep. second thing is you have to be prepared to do it. Like my thing is don't put that calling card out there and it's you and the janitor behind you. Like you need a yeah, team to I do mean, national if, work. If right? You don't want to be, if you don't want to be flown out to LA from New York for, to go manage an onsite project. Right. If that's going to be difficult for your, your family life, your children, your spouse, your partner, yeah. or just, you have no desire desire, then, then being in the national magazine at that level is, is really a vanity project at that point And really could be ne actually negatively affect your reputation because if you get called for projects like that and you can't deliver because you can't, or you won't, what, yeah. well, you know, now you've got a, a strike against you. So, yeah. okay. So I love it. So there is a criteria for deciding. And I would just add when I hear you explain that criteria, it is taking a look around you at your team. Is not, not only do you have a team that can be, you know, traveling around for national work, but are they at the level for that as well? Right. Yeah, because it's one absolutely. thing to have three people working with you, but are they three people that can sometimes be the one to get on and off a plane and represent you with the builder or the architect and have an intelligent conversation and take yeah. some confidence with them? It's because, a lot. And, right. And also I had um, a client recently who reached out to me who is in Brooklyn and she did a uh, she got a project in Miami and she was talking to me about how the photo shoot didn't go well. And, um, and the more that she talked through it and like, you know, described to me 
why it was why she didn't like the photographs. It was really because getting there and trying to style it from afar and prep styling and manage all the styling of the photo shoot just ended up totally falling apart because mm. it was usually expensive and um cuz you're paying for a hotel, you're paying for the photographer, you're paying for the styling, you have to get everything on site and it was like in the keys somewhere. Oh. <laughs> and and I was like, okay, well I think based on what you're saying, it's it's not so much that um you know that there was something wrong with the photography, it's that the location um might have just been really difficult to afford to photograph based on where you live. Mm-hmm. So um so yeah, going and and producing work out out of state that's not within driving distance can be really can be tricky and you have to be ready to go do that. You right. know, I mean, it's it's a lot. Right. Like don't drop the ball. Don't be all excited to get the project, uh, you know, five states away and then exactly. realize that you're going to at the end of it not do it to completion. Not, yeah. It's like not and designed to completion, not c- completely t- the project completion is ending at the full photography right. of it. And I, I really want to single out Ellie Moroz a little bit mm-hmm. because um, this is somebody who will tell you, you know, right off the bat, no, I'm not interested in going there. You know, I'm not interested in doing that. I'm not interested in taking like these projects that I don't know how to manage because I have two young sons and my, I'm, I'm part of like my husband's contracting business and I want to be I want to be um, a big fish in Westfield. Right. And, and she's doing it. Yes, she you know? is. She really and, is. You know, and, and you don't need, you don't need to go full stylist on a, on a project to be a big fish in your immediate network. And you don't need it to make a living either. So you ha- you do have to think through because I worked on styling with Ellie. I work through all those things with her. I'm, I'm on set with her and we are working through styling and making opinions and, and collaborating together. And she was featured, um, like their office was featured, uh, by like the Westfield association for, um, they, they both featured on their Instagrams, but the historical society, I think, because they restored their building that they're in, in Westfield. And, and, you know, the other projects that I did with her, for instance, um, another one that I photographed with her, like Philip Jeffries, the wallpaper company, mm-hmm. ended up um, purchasing one of my photographs to use in their style book. And that's a great – real and, and another designer who's based in um, New York, Flatiron 27, they purchased one of those too. And because, you know, just like just like designers, the the – wallpaper companies, you know, it's tricky for them to go and, you know, they don't know where their, where their product's always going to be. And, and, and look, Ellie is a trusted source, right? Right. Like the photo shoot that Ellie's going to produce is going to be well styled and, and, you know, and they, they see her work, which is, is my photography. And, and that's a great, you know, that's another touch point. Hey, like my design is well respected you know, within the design world. And I'm, I'm just here and I'm servicing my, my, my community mm-hmm. that I live in. And there was no payment of a stylist involved. So you just have to think, you know, you have to think about what you're investing in and what, what's worth it to you because you don't need one. You have to think about your why. You don't, you don't need to go pay that, that day rate to a stylist if you don't really want, you know, huge coverage on it. And or, by the way, if you're – photographer is talented and skilled and can help you with it. Right. So, yeah, exactly. right. Okay. So, cause I mean, I'm sure there are designers listening that have worked with photographers before that, you know, not that they didn't come in and do what they do professionally, but did what they do. They set up the lighting and they set up the yeah. angles and this and that, but really aren't that collaborative partner in the styling. So yeah, know, there's a distinction there. I so, do have to say though, in terms of differences between photographers and I believe Ashley Cox was the one who said this. There are real estate photographers yes. who are very talented at what they do for real estate to mm-hmm. sell your home. And then there's an interiors photographer. And then there's a third category. And there's a photographer who does a lot of different things. They do portrait photography. They do commercial photography for, say, advertising. And then interiors is something that they are good at doing. But it might not be their niche, so styling isn't really something they want to touch with a 10-foot pole. Right. That's a great point that there are different types of specialties and 
to to your point, echoing Ashley's point, somebody who photographs for realtors is not the same type of photography for interiors. And even though that photographer might say, I do interiors, he's not or she's not really, the, the, their why is different, right? Their why yeah. is different. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of distortion that happens in those shots yeah. um, because, for, good, for good reason. Yeah. They're, showing the home, they're trying to make it look bigger than it is. And the lights are on and, and all that jazz. And it's totally, totally a different skill set. Um, mm-hmm. And somebody can be a very successful realtor photographer. I know my realtor sent me one when we were thinking about our home. And um, and they're just different skill sets. Yes. And I mean, I'm I'm actually a multifaceted photographer as well. I do lifestyle and I've done food and I've done culture and I've done travel. Um, but this is a, this is just a niche that has in specifically in the last two years really taken off, I think, because I like getting it totally involved. Mm. Uh, I like being a part of the full project and making sure that we think for, we think it through together. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And that's probably, um, you know, yeah, it's fun for you to be, to be yeah. the partner, not just the, the hired photographer for the day. I can hear it. I can hear it okay. in everything that you're saying. It's very cool. So t- t- tell me a couple of things before I let you go. Um, how about, are there, typical mistakes or typical challenges for the designer listening that is not going to have a stylist on their next project and maybe is not even going to have the luxury of a you know talented interiors photographer who has the skill set of styling but maybe has to do it with their iPhone because they're just starting out or their photographer isn't a companion in the styling are there typical things that you could say yeah this almost always happens watch out for this or watch out for that what would you say yeah I think if you're at that if you're at that entry if you're at that entry point um there are certain things in a space that end up making your your photograph look um, less than worthy or, or, or really attract a market. Cause I know plenty of people who take really great iPhone photos on, mm-hmm. on Instagram um, betting and having it steam pressed and fluffed is a, is a massive, is a massive pitfall um, because what a client likes to sleep with isn't necessarily what photographs well. Right, and oftentimes, right. especially on king size beds, I notice this problem. The pillows just don't end up, reading properly because everything is either not the right size or it's not uh, stacked up enough or you didn't have the right throw pillows. Um, so making sure a bed is steamed that you don't need a photographer to do that. Um, making sure it's steamed, made and pressed or intentionally messy. Right, um, one or the other, right? One or the other. <laughs> yeah. Um, that you think through that. That's a, that's a big mistake. I notice, even when people do style, um, and I often say like having, you know, king size pillows and part of your styling kit is great. And having an, a set of white sheets that, um, that you like to use for a shoot is, is awesome. It, those things are really helpful. Um, and then, um, I'd say another thing is cords, um, with lamps oh. and they, um, they need to be, they need to be properly, um, tied up and hidden for a shot um, because they end up just looking kind of cheapy. And one really great um, thing to have in your styling toolkit is called gaffer's tape. Okay. Um, it comes in lots of different colors. I have a white in my kit and I also have a gray. And But it, I think it comes in a range of colors. And the great thing about gaffer's tape is that it doesn't damage walls and it doesn't damage furniture and wallpaper because it oh. doesn't leave an adhesive behind. So And it tears really easily. So even if you don't have scissors on you, you're fine. Okay. Um, and I, I use it on my camera for my tether record. I use it all, all the time, and it's a great it's a great thing to have regardless of who you are. Um, and then I think another thing that people underestimate is the hair that pets leave behind mm. and how it really shows up. Um, pets leave behind, especially on wood floors, if there's a dog that sheds, I've, I've noticed that as a huge issue on, on photo shoots even that, that I'm hired for. Um, and then also it happens on couches and stuff. And that stuff is, is really time consuming to get, to get rid of, you know, 
Right. So um, that, and we're talking about a space that somebody thinks has been cleaned and prepared. We're not talking about somebody, right? So you're talking yeah. about be don't be surprised that what looks totally clean and normal when I put it in my camera, it's going to show up. Exactly. And I've had you know clients be like, "That's not going to show up, is it?" And I always say, "Yes, it is," because <laughs> I shoot raw <laughs> and I shoot very like clear, crisp photos. So you know, there's really no hiding um, in my photography. It's it's got to be clean, and or else we're going to have a big retouching fee on the back end. <laughs> okay. Um, those things are really you know like hair is a difficult thing to remove, um, and it's different than you know editing out like you know, hot, uh, recess lighting or something, which is easy. Um, but, um, yeah, the, the cleanliness of a project, um, with your iPhone, even that that's an important thing too. making sure the counter's clean, making sure I, I, I know it seems like it kind of seems, uh, like you should know that, but you'd be surprised, you know, <laughs> like it's not something that you pay attention to necessarily, you know, like you just think, Oh yeah, the space is great. But yeah, my cat like just sat on like the, the table and left like a fur ball. <laughs> right. You know? right, right, um, right. So those are things I definitely notice. and thinking about, um, and this is a little bit of a two Oh two thing because it does require you to think like a photographer. Um, what's in the background of your picture? Mm. Like we talk about, you know, photo bombs, with people, but there are photo bombs in interiors too. Right, <laughs> like, right, right, right. Is there a car in the window? Is mm. there, um, like, is the garage door open? Is, um, is there something, you know, in the background when, like, say you're focusing in on, on like, um, maybe like flowers in your home that you like or flowers in your client's home, you know, did, did somebody leave, um, maybe like a meal bar? like, you know, two feet away from it that actually is in the frame, you know, right, right, so right. thinking about the background, um, is, is a big, is, is another thing. I think that if you're taking iPhone photos, you're not necessarily thinking about, cause not everybody thinks like a photographer. Right. Um, and then l the other thing is, is utilize natural light when you have it because taking shoot, uh, taking photos in the dark doesn't really make for a great, um, Instagram feed. Okay. So time of day, really will matter for the quality of the photos you're taking with your phone. If you're taking a picture of the window treatment, you don't want to take into the sunlight or do you? No. Well, right? okay. So window treatments specifically are very tricky to capture. Yeah, they're a pain in the neck. Yeah. You have to, they have to be in direct light. Otherwise they're going to be blown out or you have to use, um, lighting equipment. Right. Always because, you have to counteract the sun. Right. So you don't want the sun to be hot for a window treatment. Like if a room, if, if you, if let's say you have a bedroom, like I had one designer and if she had, I think if we had, um, thought through the lighting a little bit more, I would have photographed that room at a different time of day, but it just happened to be our second location. Mm. Like it's a full master bedroom and the sun is coming through the window. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to, that means that the fabric um, is going to be trickier to read on the window treatment mm -hmm. because there's full sun, you know, coming through that window. So if if window treatments are something that you really care a lot about capturing, then the time of day you photograph them matters a great deal. And sometimes um, just the nature of the architecture or the placement of the room and what direction it faces. Sometimes that's just something you kind of just have to deal with because mm -hmm. it, it's a real reality of the direction of the home. And I think a lot of times people might want to get mad at the photographer, but we, we don't change that. We just come in and work with what we have, you right. know? So, right. um, it, sometimes it is what it is. Right. But that is something to think about when you're making your appointments and scheduling your work with the photographer is to know, you know, how does the sun come into that room? What time of day does the sun come into that room? And if nothing else, just have that part of the conversation that you let them know. Right. And yeah. I love your whole idea about the, the pre taking the pictures with the iPhone and sending it to you as the photographer prior to the shooting day, because yeah. this way you get to see things that we don't even realize we, you need to see. And it could be as simple as that sunlight, the way it's coming in and what's happening. And then, like you said, the background, you know, shots and so forth like that, what's happening in the right. background 
and everything. So very that that seems like uh, it would be a well worthwhile step as opposed to just showing up and going, okay, this is oh, what yeah. I have to deal with, right? That's a lot to think about. That's why I always say hire a professional because it's really it. hard to do by yourself. Step away from the camera. Yeah. <laughs> Back away. Back off. <laughs> Leave yeah. this to the professionals. <laughs> but even that, there's uh, what what it is is it's interesting to hear you describe it. You clearly have a passion for it. You clearly have a talent for it. You are truly in interested in being the partner and having the project be as well presented as it can all the way to the point that you are pitching on behalf of the designer. And what I, I make sure that we make this distinction. I don't know if we did or not, but when you pitched the Domino on behalf of Christina Kim, you then, when they said yes, you turn the interview over to Christina. Oh, absolutely. Right. It's not like, oh, here, interview me for this project that I yeah. photographed, and it's all about how I photographed it. So yeah. that's a very generous, collaborative partner. And yeah. so that's an awesome thing. And it's another, it's a, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, Charlotte and I talk about this a lot because there are some photographers who are, um, their personalities, you know, like they're, mm. they've, kind of grown themselves as personalities, but we always like to think of ourselves as we're here as a, in a, in a service industry. We're here to make you shine. We're here to make you look good. And we add a value, com, valuable component. And yes, I, I like the press too. I'm looking to get business for my sure. business just like you are, but, um, but we're here to make you shine. And right. that's my, that's always my goal. And I have, you know, designers of all different styles, mm -hmm. um, as does Charlotte, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, I love that way, way of looking at it because the truth is, is that, you know, your why is to support the designer who's paying and supporting you, by the way. But your why is also that, you know, to, to have your work featured as well. And then you other designers find you based on that. And I guess one of the, the, the little mini ahas, it's not like, you know, earth shattering aha, but it is a new thought for me is that considering when you look for a photographer, somebody like yourself that is well experienced in the sense that you can see the body of press and you understand that that not only is, here's a little aha, it's not only that it validates your work and your talent, that's what, what I would have thought. But what the aha is, is, oh, and he or she might have a good repertoire of contacts with editors, and that could be helpful. So yeah. that's a little nuance there that I like, yeah, and absolutely. that's a good thought. So very interesting. Is there anything that you can think of, Raquel, that we need to say about this before we go, that any last final ideas or thoughts or tips for a designer when considering hiring and working with a photographer that you think we should share? Um, yeah, I would say keep, keep an open mind. I mean, you have to, you have to think about your bottom line, you know, when you're investing in photography. Um, but keep in mind that I have, I've been hired to reshoot things that were shot the wrong way the first time. Oh. So it is not, it, it, it is, it is a, it is not an easy decision to make. And I know, I know that for myself for investing in my own business. Um, but I have had, you know, clients, who have worried about the expense and and at the end of the day they ended up being happy because they had a partner who was going to add value to their business and work through them with them to get the best possible product and i feel so sorry when they have to go and reshoot with me because they didn't like what they got on the on the first run and mm -hmm. it, that probably was expensive too mm -hmm. so i always say wait to shoot, wait to shoot till you're ready financially. Um, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to rush it. Um, wait till you have the funds to do this and then do it right. right. Because you can, you can build a social media presence on a blog with an Instagram first. If you don't have a portfolio site, I had clients who did it. Mm -hmm. They had it before, instead of having a portfolio site, they had a blog site that they, that they communicated with and they, and they grew their Instagram presence and, and internet SEO that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I always say, do it right from the start, but that doesn't mean that you have to do it immediately. Wait to work with the right partner, you know, shoot it in, in the way that it's going to be translated the best because 
we're all in, we all have to brand ourselves. Branding is extremely important and don't shoot what doesn't represent you properly and what you don't want to go do for somebody. Mm -hmm. If it's, if it's something, you know, with the, the, the things that you capture, your work that you capture, it should represent you well, and it should represent what you want to do going forward. So I, um, I just, I, I think designers, you know, look for, look for the right, look for the right partner. And it might not be me. And I, I accept that because there's lots of talented photographers out there and, and, you know, you might have a relationship that's awesome and working for you. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, but take the time to find that partner because they can be with you for your career. Because again, that's branding and you want a consistent portfolio. So I can't let you go because now you made me think of questions <laughs> on that. <laughs> I could turn my brain off, but I don't know. <laughs> so, That's okay. okay. So, but here's the, the question I have in there. I hear what you're saying. I hear that you're saying, don't do it bad. Wait till you can do it good. Right. That's basically what you're saying. And when you do it, do it well, because it's going to represent you. But we also know that, designer after designer after designer has come on this show when they are five and eight and 20 and 30 years down in their career. And they say from the beginning, put a line item in your project for professional photography. Okay. So what my question is based on what you're saying is because I know all my baby designers just out there went, went, Oh my God, I thought we were just supposed to hire a photographer and get this done. Now you say I have to wait until I can hire amazing photographer. So is there something to growing with your photographer? So in other words, the value of, you know, you have a $10,000 guest bedroom refresh. Well, you're not going to hire a $10,000 photographer for that, right? So is is there value to you as you just expressed that closing statement? Is there something that you would say to somebody and said, look, if the, the room budget, it's your, you're starting out is 10 grand for that master bedroom refresh. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what, what do we say to that? To clear that up because I well, hear you at the other end, you're, you're established off. and you got some money, right? Yeah. First off, I am not a ten thousand dollar. Well, I you know what I'm, I don't know. I mean, who you are. yes, I know but, you're not um, five hundred. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not five hundred. Um, but um, okay. So if you're budgeting, right, you have to accept that part of that project is probably going to be coming in, like that you've pulled out from your budget from the project for photography. Um, so and then part of it might be um. Part your marketing of like, investment. Your marketing investment. Right. And that that's just gotta be that. Because you should do it right from the get go. Like I have um a designer in DC who's super, super talented. Actually she's in Baltimore, but she services DC. And um she doesn't shoot that frequently, but when she does, she goes with me or this other photographer who's more expensive than me, who's who's awesome. Mm. Um, and now she's switched to me because I'm a little bit of a more reasonable price point. Um, and that other photographer like travels the world, by the way, like she's amazing. Mm. Um, and, you know, gets sent to like Italy and stuff, which wow. I am goals. Hashtag goals. Hashtag goals with a Z. <laughs> and um, but, you know, but she realizes um like I'm a contemporary designer. I have really good taste. I want my photography, um, you know, to translate that as well. And I'm going to be really, really precious about the way it's captured. And I think, um, I think it's, it's important to be because you have a brand that you're going to have for longevity. You are going to grow as a designer in, you know, you might be starting out, it might be your first couple, couple years. And yeah, you're young, you're in your twenties, but these are part of, the decisions that all business maker, all business, you know, all business owners, all entrepreneurs have to make. And those pictures are going to be around for 10, 20, 30 years throughout your, the course of your life. So you have to think a little bit long term when capturing your work. Okay. Um, can we can we qualify it this way? Um, can we qualify it that say you are in the first three years in business? How yeah. about this? Not every project that you're going to do in your first three years is actually it's photographic, not you know, worthy at this level. But yeah. if you've got one that that's the one you're saying, make the investment, bite the bullet and budget for it. 
Absolutely. We can, okay, so we can clarify it that way. I love that clarification. So if you are doing a $5,000 bedroom refresh, okay, iPhone and some apps and this and that to lighten it up and make it fabulous. But when you, when you have the opportunity for that project that you know has the potential, then, then invest in it. Okay. Yeah. I can and I've that. had clients who like, you know, they might have only done one or two rooms in a house like yesterday. Like I did two different locations in one day and it was a full day for me, but for them, it was two small projects, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, that, that weren't that many spaces, but we, we banged it out in a full day mm-hmm, together. Mm-hmm. So yeah, be, be precious. Not everything you're going to produce at the beginning of your career is going to be photo worthy or investment worthy. Right. So, so be precious. Be smart about it. I love that. I can live with that advice. That's awesome. And <laughs> at, based off that Pinterest podcast that I, I listened to, you know, 10, 10 pictures go a long <laughs> way, way, way farther than I realized they could. So, um, right? How about when Kate you know? said that? That was Kate all. That was a Power Talk Friday recently. That's hysterical. How I, I almost that was the huge that was my big huge ah moment from aha moment from that episode when she yeah. was saying, yeah, you can p- post the same picture to kitchens. The, yeah. the kitchens category, then you can post it to the backsplashes category, then you can post it to, you know, lighting category, like you make that picture work for you, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I was like, wow, I don't know, that's exponential, you know, exponential marketing. It's amazing. So don't underestimate the power of, you know, 10 good shots. That's it. Cause 10 good shots, you can get 10 months out of that. The way Kate was talking, right? She was talking about it. I was like, wow, really? But that makes sense for the algorithm for Pinterest. It really does. Exactly. I know. And that, that was episode 331, Kate, all Pinterest for your interior design firm. She's an uh, expert on Pinterest. She has a company called simple pin media. And uh, yeah, that was a lot of really great eye opening tips in that, that show. So Anyway, well, I can't thank you enough, Raquel. You really are a very, very talented lady, very passionate about what you do. Um, Mm -hmm. A long list of cred to your name here and and, uh, a long list of press for such a short time in business. But that's really spectacular. Thank you so much for sharing your tips with us. Thank you, Luann. Okay, first of all, you know that Raquel teased that Christina Kim's work was going to be published somewhere pretty fabulous and she wasn't at liberty to say but a couple of weeks later after we recorded her show but before I recorded this outro she let me know that July 20th which is show air day is the day that domino.com is supposed to release the interiors designed by Christina and of course photographed by Raquel so head over to domino.com to see if it's there. And the really cool thing that I love about this is that this opportunity for Christina happened because Raquel, her photographer, was being proactive. I just love it. I just think it's so awesome. And I actually have another teaser for you. Since Raquel is only about 20 minutes from me here in New Jersey, I I invited Raquel to be our guest speaker at the next Lunch and Learn at Window Works on September 17th, 2018. So this is a huge shout out to all my New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania designer besties. If you want to meet Raquel in person and learn her secrets for creating pro interior shots and styling them, be sure to get on my email list so that you get the Eventbrite link to RSVP to come to the event. These Lunch and Learns are free events at window works. Okay. So to be on my email list, text the number four, 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 nine, 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 and then enter the word design biz D E S I G N B I Z no caps, no spaces. All righty. As, as of this recording, I am looking forward to going to Vegas to the power talk Friday tour, the one day live coaching event co-sponsored by my Doma studio designer Inc. Revel Woods and the International Window Coverings Expo. As of the time that I'm recording this, I'm not quite sure if we're sold out yet, but if you want in, just ask. Go to luannnigara.com slash las dash Vegas. Okay. That's it for today.
Thanks tons for joining me. Thank you for your emails, your direct messages on Instagram, your reviews on iTunes. I read every one and I'm so happy and grateful to be on this journey with you. Go out there today and decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.